In the 1970s, British serial killer Robert Moseley murdered four men, three of them while he was serving his sentence in prison. He went into prison as a murderer and became a serial killer in jail. His victims were sex offenders and Robert, who was abused when he was younger, hated them, so he murdered them believing it was justice killing. Since the killing, he's known to be Britain's most dangerous prisoner and as a result he's been in solitary confinement since 1979. The media either called him Cannibal Moosley or Hannibal Lecter. Robert John Moosley was born on the 29th of June 1953 in Liverpool, England. He was one of 12 children who grew up in a far from pleasant household. Living in a council estate in Speak, he was regularly beaten by his parents and was taken into care. After social services found that Robert and some of his siblings was experiencing parental neglect. His parents would visit occasionally and later it was decided that the children would return to their family home. However, when Robert was 8 years old, he was taken into an orphanage again after he reported that he was raped. The Catholic orphanage in Crosby was a safe place for little Robert as it protected him from the life he would have lived if he stayed with his unresponsible parents. During his time in care, his father disliked him so much that he told the rest of his siblings that Robert was dead. Robert said all he can remember from his childhood is the beatings. Once he was locked up in a room for months and his father only opened the door to hit him with a stick several times a day, leaving him with open wounds and bruises all over his little body. Robert left the orphanage when he was 17 and moved to London. Unfortunately, whilst there he turned into a drug addict and was working as a male prostitute. Robert was frequently sexually abused, especially by older men, and it was because of this he developed a deep hatred for paedophiles. Robert was suffering from mental illnesses and he started hearing voices telling him to kill his parents, and he had attempted suicide a number of times. In 1974, when Robert was only 21 years old, he was on the streets. And after having a conversation with John Farrell, they headed to Wood Green in London. John then bragged to Robert, showing him photographs of children he had previously sexually abused. This really angered Robert, so he strangled him to death. Shortly afterwards, Robert then handed himself in, saying he killed a sex offender, so he was immediately arrested. He was deemed unfit to stand a trial and was sentenced to life in prison in Broadmoor Hospital. Robert was reported to have a very high IQ and he loved music and art. He planned to undertake music at the Open University and his inmates would describe him as kind and highly intelligent. However, in 1977, his behaviour changed for the worse and his actions made him infamous. Robert and fellow inmate David Cheeseman lured David Francis into their cell and locked it. They then kept him hostage for nine hours, torturing and desecrating him. They cracked his skull open by smashing his head against the wall. Robert then proceeded to eat his brain using a spoon. When officers arrived at the crime scene, they found a spoon in David Francis's cracked skull. Robert said he chose David Francis because he was a child molester and he hated paedophiles. After the murder, Robert was charged with manslaughter and he received a life sentence. Furthermore, he was transferred to Wakefield Prison, which is a maximum security prison. Just one year later, Robert killed his second inmate. He lured the sex offender into his cell and once inside, Robert cut this man's throat, then hid his body under his bed. Wasting no time, he then proceeded to lure other inmates into his cell. They all refused apart from one and unfortunately, he became his final victim. Robert attacked him and repeatedly bashed this man's head into the wall and his skull was pierced with a knife Robert had made earlier on. An inmate reported Robert looked wild with madness in his eyes. After Robert realised nobody else wanted to go into his cell, he walked to the officer's office and placed a homemade knife on their desk and confessed to the two killings. In 1983, Robert was deemed too dangerous to be put into a normal cell after he murdered three inmates, so a new plan was put in place for him and he remains in solitary confinement. They decided to build a two-cell unit in the basement of Wakefield Prison. Unlike a normal cell, his cell was made completely of perspex, and the furnitures were made of reinforced cardboard. He had a cardboard table, chair, and his bed was a concrete slab. To prevent him from escaping, Robert had a solid steel door. 
which when open leads to a small cage for food to be passed to him. He also had his own personal yard, which was 5.5 meters by 4.5 meters. However, he was only allowed out there for one hour a day to exercise with a minimum of five guards watching him. Since moving into the custom-made cell, Robert has written to numerous outlets about his life in prison. In one letter, he said, The prison authority sees me as a problem, and their solution has been to keep me in solitary confinement and throw away the key. To bury me alive in a concrete coffin, it does not matter to them whether I am mad or bad. They do not know the answer, and they do not care. Just as long as I am kept out of sight and out of mind. I am left to stagnate, vegetate, and to regress. Left to confront my solitary head-on with people who have eyes but don't see, and who have ears but don't hear, who have mouths but don't speak. My life in solitary is one long period of unbroken depression. In March of 2000, Robert unsuccessfully pleaded for the terms of his solitary confinement to be relaxed or to be allowed to commit suicide. He also asked for a pet budgie, but this was denied. Let me know what your thoughts are on this case and thank you so much for watching. Please do give us a like, support our channel by subscribing and sharing our videos to people who may find our content interesting. Stay alert and stay safe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.